Welcome to Ecamm Live. There's a lot going on in here, but I promise you it's gonna make sense too. Ecamm is the best streaming software, especially for Mac. You can only use it if you're a Mac user, but it is the best program that I've used for live streaming and for video production, which is mainly what I use it for. So what you see right now is live demo mode. So within Ecamm Live, I'm able to record the screen so I can show you how things work. Down below, are all of the different panels that you can have open, but you don't need to have all of them open. When I first got started, I closed everything and then I just went through everything one by one to see what it was for. That's what we're going to do. Each of these things are independent. And once you do figure it out, you can place them wherever you want. But right now I am going to close all of them and we'll go through them one at a time. This is our main recording window. And this is where you can switch different cameras. Here you can see where you're recording. If you are still in your pre-production mode down in the corner over here where it says pause and finish, that's where you would set up your different places to live stream to. If you're just recording, there'll just be a button in the middle that says record and then you'll be recording. Preview mode is going to give you this extra bonus window, which I keep on my second monitor so I can see it because it's closer to the camera. Also, you can use this if you want to make changes before it's pushed out to the recording. So if you're live streaming, you've got somebody's name up and you misspelled it as people misspell my name all the time. And you're like, oops, I forgot to put an extra letter in there. That's where you can change it and then you can push it out so everybody doesn't see you making the changes. That you don't have to worry about too much right now. Just know that that preview mode is there. Up top here, you'll see you have a camera. That's so you are viewing from the camera. The second one is if you wanna do a screen share, which is different than the live demo mode. Live demo mode is specifically within Ecamm. Say you're doing a presentation and you need to share your browser, you need to share something else, you need to share a presentation, then that's where you can do that. And then the last one is to put media in here. So if you have a video clip that you wanna play, that's, that's how you can get to it. One of the ways you can get to it. Here on the side, we've got our default scenes. Don't get scared yet. Whenever I first started, I accidentally closed my scenes window and I didn't know where to get to it. It's up here in the corner. It's like the only one that's over there. We've got our scenes window. I like to describe them as different pages in your presentation, but they just might be moving because they're cameras. So we've got our default scene. And then down here at the bottom, you've got all these different buttons here where you can change, you can add an extra scene that will be empty. You can duplicate the current one. You can make them into groups. We're going to just save this for now. Over here, we've got, what side is that? That side. Over there in the top corner, you've got your switcher window. So if you click on that, right, if you click on them, it'll open and close. So please go through and click on things. You can do this and you can see your different cameras. So I've got two cam links plugged in, but this one's not plugged into any camera, but you can easily switch between cameras as you click around. You can also assign them to be camera A and camera B if you want. And then you can switch them that way if that's easier for you to keep track of what camera is which. So you'll see that this one is on its side right now. I'm gonna show you how we can fix that. So let's go ahead and stick with camera A, camera B. So camera A is the main one. And then camera B will be this bonus camera that I've been using. We'll keep this open for now, but that's how you can kind of set up your, your cameras. The next one is your overlays. So I'm going to place these ones we've already done up top and then we'll grab them later when we need them. We're going to go to, what are you called? The magic wand, camera effects. So camera effects, it's something I use for one button and one button specifically. You can go in here and you'll have all these different things that you can change, but because I shoot in vertical and I have my camera on its side, I use this rotate button to get her back to where I need her to be. So that is an important window for how I create content. You may want to adjust your brightness. You might want to change the temperature. You might want to zoom and pan, which is something we will do with our camera B. We're gonna tap on zoom and pan, and then I'm going to zoom out because this camera is not in vertical, but my recording is in vertical. So that's why it's not going to go beyond the sides. If I wasn't recording in vertical, it would spread out to fill the whole screen. But this is the size of my recording because recording a vertical video. That's our camera effects. There's a lot of things you can do in there. So definitely click around and see what you can do. Say if you want to mirror, if you want to make it black and white, you want to be artsy, you want to do sepia because you're in the wild west. You want to do 
a blur effect. You know, there's, there's different things that you can do. You don't need to worry about too much. Use it to get your camera in size in the place that you want. So let's place camera effects up here, lest we want to revisit. And now we will go to overlays. This is our camera and we can overlay something on top of it. So we can put our second camera on here. You can see that we've got all these different buttons here at the bottom. Click on the camera, it's going to put an extra little window here. And then from here, we can change it to different cameras that we have. We can change it to that. We can make different sizes. So if I want it to be tall, it can be. If you want a squircle, which is a square circle. I use that one a lot. I like the circle one a lot. And you can place them, you know, where, wherever you might need to have it. So in addition to cameras, you can add text, which is fun, which is going to open up this text overlay option. And then you can type in there and then you can add in your text. You can resize it. You can reposition it. If you need to change how it looks, you can click on the pencil. It's going to bring back the editor. You can do a lot in here. You can take down the background. You can change it to different fonts. Put our thing in. You can see it's got, you've got little snap lines to make sure it's in the middle if you want it to be in the middle. And then you can change your animation. So if we wanna fly from the left. So here in our overlays, if we press the little eyeball, it's gonna fly away and we bring it back. Go away, bring it back. Pretty cool. Same thing with the camera overlay, you can also animate that as well. So we can have that fly in. She's going to go away and then she's going to come back. Okay. Pretty cool. You can also add pictures as overlays, videos as overlays, websites as overlays. There's a whole timer thing that you can use, but don't worry about that right now. Text and camera overlays are what could be useful to you as you're getting started, but just know you don't have to use any overlays at all. When I got started, I, I didn't touch overlays for a while because it was a lot. Right now, I don't want to have any overlays up, so the eyeball is crossed out. And then I'm going to take her and I'm going to put her over here because I don't need to look at her right now. The next one we're going to look at is sound effects. I never use sound effects, but if you want to, there's some preloaded ones in here. You can also add your own sound effects in here. I haven't gotten into sound effect life yet, but it's there if you want it. That's typically a window that I always have closed. I just don't ever have that one open. The next one is for comments and reactions. When you're live streaming, depending on the platform, your comments will show up here and you'll be able to share them onto your live stream as an overlay. So it's basically gonna be like a little sticker that comes in, you can resize it, you can change the font, the look of it. So it matches your stream, matches your video, but in record only mode, we're not gonna have any because it's just us hanging out over here. The next one is interview mode. An interview mode, you can turn it on, you can turn it off because I'm not interviewing anybody. I don't need to have it on. This is where you can have a link to bring somebody in. If you're doing a podcast, an interview podcast, you're like tired of the way Zoom looks, like you can use this and really, really customize the way your video looks. We can do all sorts of updates to the interview landing page, but I haven't played with that yet. Interview mode, I'm gonna turn that off. And then I'm gonna put that window down here because we are just recording. So we're not doing that. And then the last button that you have here is this little cog, which is settings. This is for your preferences, which you can get to also by going to the bar in the top. And then you can go to preferences there. It's gonna bring you to the same place. And this is where you can do a lot of the setup for your recordings. You've got lots of different options in here. So just go through, click some stuff, see what's what. So I'm recording in tall nine by 16. This is where you could change it if you didn't wanna record in tall or you wanted to record in horizontal, you wanna record in square, lots of different things that you can do here. This is where you can set up recording isolated video tracks. You can have a recording where once you're done, you're gonna have a file for each camera separately, each microphone or audio input separately and one recording of everything all together. I know all that I need is just everything all together for this video. So I don't have any of those on. It's gonna to default to off. I believe. So you got to go in here and set them up. And then this is where you can also choose your recording folder, which is really important. It will save it to a folder if there's space. At one point I ran out of space on my old computer. I did this whole recording and then it didn't save. So do make sure that there's space, but I put my recording folder on my desktop so I can 
find things quickly. You can see it's up here. Ecamm recordings to file. So once I record them, ideally, I'm going to take them, rename them, and put them in some other organized fashion, ideally. We do the best we can. Destinations is where you can set up different places that you live stream to. You can live stream to multiple places at once, depending on how you have it set up. If you want to do that, you can live stream and record together, which is something that I like to do. A video, you have a bunch of different video settings in here. So like it, you have my, I have my FaceTime camera on my laptop. I can disable that so it never opens up because you know, maybe you just don't want that angle. Audio, you have different options here for audio that you can set up, different preferences for interview mode, for screen sharing, different shortcuts that you can set up, which I haven't done yet, which I feel like there's probably something cool to do in there, but I haven't done it yet. I'm keeping it simple. Remote control. So if you have a stream deck, you can set it up to control. I've actually kind of phased that out because I, I'm doing the simplest, simplest thing that I need for my production. And it was like, I needed that plug for something else, but really handy when you're live streaming. I, when I was live streaming a lot, I did use it. And I did enjoy it because you just push quick buttons and it would do things. It was great. So you can see you've got all of these different windows and you can just set up with what you need. Did we, you know which one we didn't do? Audio. Audio is your microphones. And I'm recording right now off of a Rodecaster Pro 2 that this microphone is plugged into. You can do a drop down menu here and you can see like I could get audio straight from the camera. I could get audio from my computer. If I had multiple microphones, I could plug those in. And also you can mute things. So you've got like a video sh that you're sharing and you don't want audio from your microphone to come in. You would just make sure on that scene, that page of your presentation, you press mute and then it won't come through. If you have people coming in for an interview in interview mode, they'll show up here as well. And then you can make those adjustments. Pretty cool. I typically always have the main window, obviously. And then I also have my sound levels because that's what I need to see. And then I will have my program window, which will activate when you click on like a different program. If I'm just on Ecamm, it's not gonna necessarily show up. But if I go and click on like my Google Docs, which is where I have my notes for my script and stuff like that, then this will pop up and then I can move this where I need to, which is typically on my other desktop right next to the camera so I can see what I'm looking at. If I am doing a live stream, I will have comments and reactions up. But if I'm not doing a live stream, I will close that. If I'm doing an interview, right, I will have interview window up, but I'm not necessarily using that. Overlays, if I'm using overlays. Typically my recordings, I'm not using overlays. Scenes I will use in a live stream for sure because I want to create everything ahead of time. So you're basically pre-editing. So if you wanna do like your intro slide, that's the scene. Then you can switch it to the next slide, which might be you talking. Then you can switch it to the next slide or scene and that's gonna go to your overhead camera or to your guest or to your whatever it is you're going to show your screen share, things like that. And then your camera switcher, if you wanna see all of your cameras and make sure everything is working, camera effects. Usually I only see this when I'm setting things up, but then I will close it. And sound effects, I don't typically have those open. So when I'm just recording, it really is, I'm gonna close everything, which is what I suggest you do, is start by closing everything and then just open what you need. You're like, okay, to record right now, all I need is the video and the audio. So I've got the video and then I've got the audio and that's all that I need. And then when you are done recording, you can you can pause and then you can also finish, but do, do know if you pause, you need to remember to unpause because I always forget to unpause. So please remember. And then you press finish and then it will show up. If I press finish, then this recording's gonna stop, but there's going to be a little window here about here that's going to show you where you can see your recordings. It's like, take me to the recording, send the recording to YouTube, send it to Descript. I'll just click on the folder, open up the file, make sure it did what I wanted it to do, and then move on to the next one. Watch this video for a step-by-step -step to get you started with the simplest, simplest setup. Like we might even go wireless. We might be computer only. We're gonna just make it so simple for you to go live or record a video in Ecamm. You got this, for real, for real, for real, for real, for real, you got this.